So, welcome, people, to the single emitter customs flashlight review or comparison. This is the lineup. So, mate, I thought I was going to bloody run out of batteries when I started lining batteries up for this uh, for this video. So, this has taken me honestly not that long to acquire. I've been hitting the ground running for this video. I was introduced by a friend of mine named Alex to the custom light world. He gave me my first uh, ray light in a deal that we did, a trade deal. He introduced me to Focusworks. He lent me his Focusworks F2 uh, titanium, not this one, the uh, titanium one. And he introduced me to Law Lima, or now known as uh, Dawson Machine Craft. So I owe my depleted bankroll uh, to him. Thank you very much, Alex. But I also owe him uh, a massive thank you because he has introduced me to a beautiful world of customs. I mean, look at these lights. I am just so excited to get this to get this happening, man. This is just a super duper exciting video for me. Some of these lights I'm going to keep possibly forever. And some of them I'm going to move on to recoup some funds and use those funds to buy more lights for more reviews. And so that's how I kind of justify spending so much money on these lights. But for this video, I wanted a single emitter custom flashlight review. Now, I asked a bunch of you guys on Facebook what else I should add in the single emitter review, and some people came back to me and said a boom driver. Sorry, not a boom driver, a, a boom reflector. I think that's it. So I'm so, I'm so, I am so sorry if that's not it, but I think that's it because, and that is a very cool reflector, man. That puts out a beautiful beam. So I really hope that's it. Uh, and this is in the uh, yellow day, I believe. All right, so I'm going to install the batteries, talk a little bit about the batteries first, and then we're just gonna get into this, man. This is friggin' awesome. I'm just, oh, look at all these beautiful lights made by wonderful people who just dedicate themselves to fantastic lights. All right, so first one is the Raylite Pineapple Mini. This is in the black oil. The, uh, this takes a 10440 flat top. And this is a 350 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium, 10440. You can also use nickel metal hydride or AAAs in this, just with a reduced output. But that's a really cool thing because I love a light that can do multiple uh, multiple batteries. I love that. You just, you know, you're, it's safer, I think. It's safer to take out with you. And then if the battery dies, you've just got more options. So... Raylite Pineapple Mini in the black oil. That's one of our first contenders. Next, we have this gorgeous piece here. This is the Dawson Machine Craft Hoku Clicky. And this one also takes a 10440 flat top. This is a 320 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium battery. I don't think this is compatible with uh, tr your triple A's or nickel metal hydrides. This is an absolutely gorgeous light with a gorgeous emitter. And uh, we'll, anyway, we'll talk about all that. I don't want to spoil it or start talking about one light because I'm excited. My heart is racing, people. This is a, whew, this is an exciting video. Uh, okay, so 320 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium 10440 button top is required for the micro click or the micro Arcadian or the CWF Arcadian micro or whatever you want to call it. Uh, fantastic, fantastic light. Robust as all heck. This this thing is just good to go. Next, we have the McGizmo with the Haiku head. This has a Nietzsche 119V emitter that has been de-domed, uh, which gives a such a beautiful... Uh, a beautiful appearance of, of beam profile and beam color. Now this has the one time CR123 body on it. So uh, the great thing about this is that it's using the Hive driver, I believe. So that means that I just put in a uh, rechargeable 16340 lithium battery, but it can also take a non-rechargeable uh, lithium primary battery such as that there. 
the CR123 non-rechargeable. You're gonna get a heck more runtime, amount of runtime with this thing than you will with the, uh, with the rechargeable, but I think you probably get more output with the rechargeable. But again, the ability to, to swap out batteries, to use different batteries. I mean, what the hell, that's the best ever. Next, we have a Raylite LAN here. This is in the stone wash. This is a gorgeous emitter. Uh, and this is the 219B 4500K emitter. So useful. This is such a useful emitter. Absolutely love this emitter. All right, well, this guy needs no introduction. This is your Okluma DC0. This is in brass. And this has your 10 degree optic with your 219C 4000K uh, emitter. Really nice emitter. This one you may recognize as well. It does not need any introduction. This is also a DC0. Uh, the reason why I've got two DC0s in there is not just because I love them, but is because this one is actually made of zirconium in a matte finish, believe it or not. Look at that. Uh, but this has your 30 degree optic. So I wanted to just show the difference in optics. And this gives you, is it 30 or 20? Man, I don't know. I don't know if it's 30 or 20. It's one of them. Okay. I don't actually, I actually don't want to commit to 30 and then just be a liar. So uh, it's, uh, it's definitely not 10. Okay. It's either 20 or 30 degree optic. Uh, but this has the five, uh, 4,500K 519A Nietzsche emitter. Next is the Focusworks F2 in aluminium. This also has a Nietzsche 219C 4000K emitter. That is the same as the brass DC0. So what you will see here is very similar there, okay? So they are probably the same optics, uh, probably both 10 degree optics, although the lens is larger in the in the focus works, but uh, 4000K Nietzsche to 19C. Over here we have the focus works F3 in aluminium as well. This one is the same uh, degree optic as the F2. I'm, you know, let's just call it a 10 degree. I don't, I don't know, uh, but this is in. This has the Samsung 5000K uh, emitter running in it, and you know, I know. Look, the, Sam the old Samsung, the old Samsung 5000K gets a bit of flack, you know, and it gets some flack because there's some, it, there's tinges of green in it. But let me tell you something, guys. When I take these outside and I use them at nighttime, this emitter rocks, man. It just rocks. This thing puts out so much light and the color is absolutely fine. I mean, I think it gets a bit too much flack than it deserves, you know? Why don't we just dial it back a bit on the old Samsung 5000K? Now, here is a drop dead gorgeous light. This is the Dawson Machine Craft toe die. This is in aluminium with a titanium pocket clip, a standard length pocket clip, as opposed to the short length I've got on the Hoku. Uh, and this is also running the, two, uh, the Nietzsche 219B 3000K emitter, the exact same emitter as the Hoku, because I am a sucker for not only uh, warm tints, but 219Bs. Look at that. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. What an indoor light this is. I mean, seriously, just fantastic. Oh, look at that. Low, high, low, high. Next, we have this absolute masterpiece. Uh, you may recognize it looks similar to this. That's because the heads are identical. They are both Haiku heads. However, in the uh, 14500 body edition that I've got here, this Haiku head still has its dome. So this is your Nietzsche 119V, which has its dome. This is your Nietzsche 119V domeless or de-domed as they call it. So this takes a 14500 battery. Uh, unfortunately, it does not take uh, nickel metal hydride or double A, so you don't have options. You just need a lithium 14500. Uh, but you know, beautiful, beautiful light, beautiful beam color, 4000K, but just, just a really nice beam color. And finally, look at the size of this thing. I mean, put it next to the DC0. This thing just wants to eat it. Uh, no, how could you? Oh. That is just upsetting. Uh, so this uh, this thing here is 
the Yellow Day Energy Wreck-It Light. Uh, and it's called the Sabre Edition. As you can see here, bigger is better. Well, I don't know, okay? I don't know about that. My missus swears to me that it's not, so who knows? Uh, now, this is a heavy, heavy light. It is a big, big light. I bought this off a friend that I've bought <laughs> several of these lights from, actually, because I, I, I wanted the boom reflector. And the boom reflector is something that a bunch of you guys recommended on Facebook. Uh, so I just wanted to see if I could get that so I could you know include it in the single emitter uh, video. Now, the threads are just absolutely dream, dreamlike because they are brass. And uh, I'm just using any old battery. This is an Army Tech. Uh, 3,500 milliamp hour uh, flat top. So the flat top works just fine in these. And look at that. So it's this, oh mate, I am so happy that whoever suggested for me to find the boom reflector, they did, man, because I've been opened up to a whole new world. This is running a Samsung uh, 5,000K emitter as well. So, you know, I mean, the Samsungs. We've got a couple of Samsung 5,000Ks here. Now, I do want to ask a question. Uh, about this light. So right here, the yellow day, okay, the record light. Now this says here, uh, where is it? Material. And it says here, BR, and I think that says, and the, uh, is that a slash and then P, and then a slash and then ZR, and then a slash and then BR? Does anyone know what that means? Because I I would just have assumed it says your light's brass, but that, that must mean a whole lot of other stuff. So can I please get uh, can I please get some help with what all that means? Because when I do the the solo video on this, I guess I, I want to know more about it. Uh, but yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you. All right, I think we can bring them closer now, so we can talk more about them. Actually, no, we can't because I I, I think I need to give the limelight to one of them when I'm talking about them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I am going to start with the uh, the record light. So as a sing as single emitters go, this is a beautiful single emitter. As I said, it's running a Samsung 5000K down there. Now, this light has a lot of hand presence. I mean, look at that. This thing is a beast. Now, I'm sure that this thing has been sold in different materials. I got brass. Brass is quite heavy. Uh, look at that scratch. The poor bloke that bought this, uh, Customs did that to him. Thank you very much, Customs. So that's just disgusting that they can get away with that, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's, you know, it's a gash on the head, mate. Poor bloke. But anyway, so this thing is a bloody beautiful light and it has a clicky forward, clicky switch. And it, it is a programmable light, but at the moment I've just got it on uh, moonlight, low, medium and high. Very, very sensitive McClicky switch. Just absolutely a dream to use. Now, the setting that I've got it on as well has memory mode, so it can remember everything. Now, I want a uh, couple of things about this light. So... First thing about it is that I'm just going to take it apart to show you what this light is capable of. So undo the midsection and then uh, this bit slides around. So you can actually take this bit off uh, for cleaning, I guess, or whatever. You just need to remove that O-ring there. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually close this over it because now, my friends, you have uh, an 18350 light. So look at that, look how cool that is. Single emitter that can be swapped from 18650 to 18350 with a boom reflector and a McClicky switch, a beast pocket clip. I don't know if this pocket clip is uh, titanium or not, but that's a beast pocket clip, man. I honestly, um, I kind of want to like swap that out. What do you reckon that would look good on one of these? Anyway, fantastic pocket clip. Uh, fantastic construction, and even as an 18350 light, it still has a nice hand presence. However, I'm j I've just never been a massive fan of the 18350 feel in the hand. I don't, I don't know what it is because I know they're so popular, but the 18350 feel to me just feels a bit chunky in the hand. You know, if I'm going to have something small, a 14500 kind of slender light is is more my jam whereas if i'm going to use a larger light i'm going to go the full the full belt and go to the 18650 but i just wanted to show you that this can be modified into an 18350 which is awesome because that gives you battery options you know if you've only got 18350s lying around because your 18650s are dead or lost or whatever then you've still got a light to use so that's awesome this thing can obviously tail stand 
It's just, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal light. And you will believe it when uh, when you see this thing operate at in, in the night shots because this beam is incredible. And again, thank you to the people who suggested a boom reflector uh, on, on Facebook. I am so grateful you have opened my eyes to uh, what a boom reflector is because like I said, guys, you'll see it in the in the night shots. It's just fantastic. Now I'm just gonna tighten this thing up and I'm just gonna give you some beam shots here. So if we just go, okay, so now part of this uh, reflector's brilliance is what I'm about to explain to you now. So obviously we've got here and here, which is where the kind of light cuts off. Although I don't know if you can see, there is an outer layer there, which is really cool. See that? So that outer layer is like there. Right, but I wanna draw some attention to the middle because it's the middle that gives this beam such a beautiful and complex use to it. Because that beam, what that does is, due to the reflector, the hot spot mixes beautifully with the spill and you end up getting this amazing amount of useful light in, in, inside this, this spill area. It's better, I believe, than a mixed beam profile that you get just from uh, an orange peel reflector. I think that the boom reflector is actually more superior than the orange peel reflector. So I guess I could have, I guess I could have simplified that just by saying that the boom reflector is like an orange peel reflector, but better. I guess that's that's honestly my opinion when I when I first used this light. I mean, even that's a good shot. Look at the size of the hot spot. There's so much light still dedicated to the spill. This is on such a low output. And there, there it is again. Look at that. And I move it away. It's just so useful. This is, I'm shocked at how useful this reflector is. You know what? First thing I did when I got this, uh, this light was I actually checked to see if any of these lights would fit this, uh, this reflector. And I, I just don't think they will, which sucks because this reflector has quickly become uh, a favorite of mine. So, and you know, it's in a, it's in a big light. That's the, that's the only issue. I mean, it's great for, you know, just leaving on the, on the bench in the house and grabbing it and just, you know, what's up, but to take out, this is a big light and it's a heavy light, you know, so it's probably not on the takeout uh, option board at the moment when you've got all these slender beauties. Okay, next we have the, this is the Magizmo light with the Haiku head in the 14500 body. And I'll just quickly show a comparison directly with the CR123 body. So both of these lights have the exact same head. One of them actually has the cracked ice pocket clip. The other one does not. I'm pretty sure you can guess which one's which. Okay, so we have a McClicky switch here. Forward clicky. This uh, is running the Hive driver, I believe. Uh, apparently it's extremely difficult to program. However, I haven't tried it because when I bought this light, it came exactly how I wanted it, which was moonlight, low, medium, and high with no memory. So it always comes on in moonlight mode. Fantastic, absolutely love it. Now we have a textured reflector down here. This is the Magizmo reflector. So this reflector is what gives you that brilliant beam profile here. So if I can just offer you some beam profile, look at that. So we have a hot spot, we have plenty of bleeding, we have spill. And if I just get it onto the highest output there. So see, we do have a rather narrow beam. However, look at how much it kicks out only at this distance. Look at that, it's kicking out a lot. So what that tells you is that that is gonna give you a nice spread of light with the spill area. But then if you notice here in the middle, we've got a lot of light dedicated to the middle. That's also because it is textured, but it offer, it still offers a fair bit of throw and it's deep. We have a deep reflector as well, which is gonna give you a lot of that throw. Now the heat sinks on the head here are actually very much used so uh, and useful. This light does not heat up very much and that is because of these heat sinks. And the 14500 body is just so beautiful that I actually prefer it over the CR123 body's feel. 
Because again, the CR123 body feels a little bit like an 18350, you know, chubby guy. And and I'm I just I'm I'm more, I don't know, I'm just more drawn to these these slender ones. However, the fact that you can swap batteries between rechargeable and non-rechargeable CR123s in this is an absolute masterpiece. But in terms of feel in the hand, you know, the 14500 uh, additional body is just superior to me. It just feels great and it pockets great and you know, it looks great. So it's great. Now I also love here, this lanyard bit here, you can uh, easily attach a paracord or something like that and have a really sweet bead or something hanging off that, which would just be friggin' mental. Uh, so I love that stuff. And how's the, uh, how's the bezel on it as well? So look, if I, if I leave the light on, you can actually still see uh, if the light's on or not. So the bezel just got these tiny little cutouts, which just, it's so smart because those cutouts are not going to affect the beam, uh, the beam profile at all, but they are helpful not only for good looks, but also so you know if you've left the light on when you leave it uh, on anything but moonlight mode, I guess, because it's probably pretty hard to tell if it's on moonlight mode. But this is a bloody beautiful light. I absolutely love it. I'm so happy to the gentleman who sold this to me. I did some arm twisting to get to get it, uh, and I, you know, basically offered him everything but my soul. Uh, but in the end, I got it. So I'm just so grateful. This one is not going anywhere. This one is going to stay with me until the end of time. All right. Next, we have the uh, formerly known as Law Lima, currently known as Dawson Machine Craft Toe Dye. I had to ask uh, Joshua Dawson, the, the magician over there, if uh, uh, how to pronounce Todai. I was going to call it Todai or Today or something like that. And he just wrote the words Toe and then Die uh, in, in the message when I asked him. So I'm guessing it's called a Todai. Now, this may seem like a very simple looking light, but in actual fact, it is, there, there's some genius areas in this light. And, and let me explain why. Okay, so... The flat edges around here not only look good, they are so comfortable for your hand, okay? Super, super comfortable for the hand. The pocket clip sits flush on one of the flat areas, all right? That is another stroke of genius. There it is there. So how do you reckon that goes with pocketing? I'll tell you how it goes. Smooth. So this thing just goes slip, slip, just in and out like a friggin' dream. Now, what else does this light subtly do for comfort in the hand? Well, see this little larger bit on the tail, the bit that kind of frills out? That bit sits on top of your pointer finger there for superior comfort. You can also turn it around for some cigar grip action if you really want, but that larger area here is a must and it is so bloody comfortable that, you know, you just want to stop and give Mr. Joshua Dawson a clap. Now, we have a textured reflector down there. I wonder if he's using the same or similar reflectors uh, as the McGizmo reflector. I don't know. But uh, anyway, we've got a textured, you know, kind of orange peely uh, reflection uh, uh, reflector down there. As I said, the 219B Nietzsche emitter. This is currently programmed to just your low high. So I don't know what exactly it is. It's probably like, you know, 15% and then 100%. Uh, and have I put memory mode on or not? I normally don't put memory mode on. So let's say, yeah, no memory, just, you know, your, your low high kind of. Uh, so this is great for uh, a, a, an indoor light, an outdoor light, because it's got that extra bit of oomph uh, in terms of lumen output, then this makes for a great, great outdoor light as well. But again, let's check out the beam profile here. So a bit wider of a, of a spill area in the, in the beginning than the Haiku. However, that's because the Haiku head is probably a deeper reflector, meaning that it is going to go further. So this looks like it's got a larger spill. We do have obviously your centralized hotspot, but again, you know, hotspot, spill, uh, bleeding, sorry, and then spill really, and then you move it away, it just gets larger and larger. So really, really nice. It's going to be very, very nice on the eyes. And in terms of a beam profile, this thing's going to do really, really well to cover a lot of surface area for you. Now, when you order these lights, you can order the pocket clip short or long. I've shown you the, the short one. You can order different types of screws. I ordered the black ones. You can order a uh, switch cover color. So I just ordered black to match the screws. This is running a McClicky forward, uh, forward McClicky switch, forward switch. So that forward switch basically 
just for anyone that doesn't know, forward switch from off, you can operate it, okay? Reverse clicky, you cannot operate it from off, but the, the uh, benefit of a reverse clicky is from on, you can change the output. You can't change the output from on with the forward clicky. You turn it on, you can't change it. You have to turn it off first and then change it. So it just depends on what you like. I actually freaking love reverse clickies because you can change the output whilst you're on. You'll, you turn the light on, right? Turn the light on, oh, that's too, that's too bright. Half press, go down. Oh, I, I kind of needed a bit, a bit dimmer. Half press, go down. So reverse clickies are awesome. They have their place. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, but I do like a, I do, I do, pref, mm, I don't even know if I want to use the prefer word, but they have their place. They both have their place. I love a forward clicky. I also love a reverse clicky. Forward clickies are great because you can just half press momentary and then let go. You can also get to your, your desired output pretty quickly and then click it in. And it does feel better to, I don't, I don't want to get into kind of that, but it feels better to click. It just does than a reverse clicky in my opinion. So that is the Dawson Machine Craft toe dye. Uh, but you know, just one last time in the hand. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Pockets like a dream is a dream. This is the aluminium version. Sorry, I didn't say this is the tumbled aluminium. So get it, soak it in. Tumbled aluminium with these uh, shiny ring areas here just to spruce it up, you know. And look at that. Can you see that? Let's just see how he's got that ring right at the tail. Oh man, that is so subtle, you'd almost miss it. But when you notice it, you just see, you just think, man, that is kind of like a stroke of genius how he does that stuff. How does he do it? How, oh mate, that I would pick some of these people's brains just for days if they let me about how they do their job. I'm just so fascinated. Next, we have the Focusworks F2 in aluminium. No, it's the F3. My mistake, actually, I'm just gonna get these both together because I'm gonna confuse them. Okay, so we have the F3 over here and the F2 here. What are the differences? Okay, major, major difference I can see straight away is that the F3 is thicker in the body all the way down. The F2 has this little cutout. What does that mean? Well, that means that the feel, uh, the, the feel in the hand is gonna be different. Now, which one feels better? Honestly, I think the F2. I think that the fact that these two fingers, basically three fingers, fit around the slimmer end of the body, the tail kicks out here, and then the your pinky finger kind of falls on the uh, on the head, makes it for a very uh, very comfortable light. Now that does not mean that the F three is not comfortable because the F three has got more to grab onto. So the F three very much so can be comfortable. But for my hands, the F two is more comfortable. Now both of these lights have titanium pocket clips that are placed on a smooth body, which just like the toe die means that you have a glorious experience when you pocket these lights. Utterly glorious. And they both have a McClicky switch as well. So we have forward McClicky switches. Now, both of them there, if you wanna see the beam profile, actually, let's get the F2 happening first. So we have kind of a total internal 10 degree area here. Bang, it's all gonna shoot out the front, basically. You're not gonna have much peripheral light like spill, but as you'll see in the night shot shots, because you have so much light coming out of these lights, you will get uh, a lot of peripheral light. But now look at the Samsung. Samsung's gonna give you more peripheral light, much more. I'm telling you, stop knocking the Samsungs, mate. It's a bloody good LED. I mean, check that out. This has a awesome spill peripheral light area. It's kicking out a thousand lumens in the uh, out the front. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And you're not gonna be too concerned about, oh, there's a little bit of green in there because when you really need this, you're gonna be looking at what the light reveals. You're not gonna be looking at the light beam, you know? I love uh, what Malkoff says in their, in their website. They say, oh, if this is for white, well, if you're a white wall hunter, this beam profile's not for you. And I agree with that, man, you know? Like, don't get me wrong. I like, I like my fair share of white wall hunting. I do it all the time, but, when I take a light out to use, I don't care really what, if there's a tint of green or something in it because I need this light to reveal things for me. You know, in pitch black, I need it to reveal things. I don't need it as a utility light to, to put on a white wall and say, oh, that's got a bit of a green tint, so I'm not gonna use this light now. It doesn't work like that, not for me anyway. All right, so these two, that is the Focusworks F2 and F3. 
Next, we have the Okluma DC0s. Now, I have brass and I have zirconium in the matte finish. Both of these are housing the forward McClicky switches as well. I think you might be getting a theme here, guys. McClicky switches, they, there's probably something to them. Uh, now, so forward McClickies, there we go. Now, on my left, we have the 20 or 30 degree optic. On my right, we have the 10 degree optic. As you can see here, they both have their place because the 10 degree is going to give you more throw uh, and the 20 or 30 degree gives you much more of a spread, which is really, really, really useful. Uh, both of them have glow gaskets in them, if you can see there. And that's a good shot of the difference in how the uh, optics actually look. Now, these are the pocket clips that these lights come with. Very simple, yet very effective. They are really, really nice and sturdy, so pocketing them is not an issue at all. They go, they go on just fine. They're not weak by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, the DC-0 Oklumas are actually very, very much used it to swap pocket clips out. So, you know, I, you often see uh, pocket clips from Hanko or from all sorts of other custom lights just put on the DC-0. In fact, I had the F3's uh, pocket clip on the DC-0 brass, which was awesome, but I couldn't, I actually couldn't pocket it. It was too rigid on the, on this area here. But now if we just uh, talk about this area here, so one of the most brilliant genius things about the DC-0 is in fact this grippy area here. And I'll just grab the F3 just to show an example. Okay. So it is, the DC-0 is thinner in every way, okay? So that makes it more slender, arguably more pocketable. It fits in uh, pocket organizers like a dream, this guy. But despite the DC-0 being thinner, holding it in my hand, it feels like it's, it's not going anywhere. It feels sturdier in the hand than the F3. Why is that? Because of this grippy bit here. These four rings of utterly just perfection in the machining world uh, go perfectly in the hand for grip, absolutely perfectly in the hand for grip. Whereas the F3, it doesn't have any grip and even the F2 as well, there's no grip here. Now that's a dream for uh, pocketing, but it's not a dream for, for holding it. Now look, how many times have the F2 and 3 slipped out of my hands? None, but when you feel this light in your hand and you realize how sturdy and grippy it is because of these machined out areas, then you just it's just part of the brilliance of Okluma, really. Now, I love Okluma because uh, the DC-0, in fact, because of how simple and, and small and petite it is. Often I pick it up and I use it like this, just with clicking from the, with my pointer finger from the head and just using it like that. You don't even really need to grab a full grip on it because it's just, it's just such a nice light to, to use and pocket and just everything really. And in the EDC, uh, in the single emitter custom EDC flashlight world, these two are probably the benchmark for how compact a 14500 light can get because these are 14500s. So they take the 14500 light, uh, battery. Now in terms of beam profile, is that the highest? Yep. So in terms of beam profile, the uh, 20 or 30 degree optic here just really spreads. Look at that, it spreads beautifully. Uh, this, is pl this is more than enough light for pitch black. I took this out last night and walking to and from the car, it's just like, you don't need any more. And this optic is just perfect. Whatever optic it is, is, is absolutely perfect. I love it. So there it is there. You do have some centralized light, but it really does spread out nicely. Now, if we just uh, compare that to the 10 degree optic, so there's the 10. You still got some peripheral light, don't get me wrong, but bang, look at all that. The majority of the light is shooting out the middle there. Very, very different to the 20 or 30 degree that you'll see over there uh, in the in the zirconium. But this one, so this one will give you more throw. That one's gonna give you a more evenly spread amount of light. Just depends on your application. Now the Raylite LAN. So this one, as I said, has a reverse clicky. You click it in and then you've got uh, you've got control. It has an absolutely beautiful emitter, Nietzsche 219B, 4,500K. Again, smooth, uh, uh, sorry, sturdy pocket clip on a smooth body, perfection. Perfection for pocketing, guys, absolutely perfect. The, uh, the mixture of a sturdy pocket clip on a smooth body makes for very, very smooth pocketing, uh, one hand pocketing, really, really 
enjoyable pocketing. This thing has tritium slots uh, all the way through it, so you can slot tritium tubes in there on the tail, all the way around the 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 tail there, the neck, or no, not the neck, the the tail cap and the tail. I meant to say. Uh, you got a bit of a cutout pattern on the pocket clip, and as I said, this guy can use not only 14500s but also uh, nickel metal hydride and AA uh, batteries. Now, if you see here, we have a really nice beam beam profile, very very uh, very evenly spread. You've got great amount of spill. You've got a beautiful hot spot in the middle that's going a long way. So really really nice. You've even got some bleeding there, so it is going to be kind of a a mixed-ish beam, but this is really your hot spot and spill style of light, and it just does it does a lot for for when you're using it because you do get a lot of light out into the spill area, which helps for a great spread. And you've got a glow ring all the way around there, which is awesome. Now the Haiku head on the CR123 body. Again, we are using a McClicky switch. I do believe that Don perhaps even invented those switches. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, or maybe he was one of the first ones to use it. Either way. He kind of uh, he kind of brought brought this to the custom light attention, uh, the custom world attention. Now, awesome thing about this uh, this body is look at how open that is. So hitting the clicky switch is just you can never miss it. Whether you do it with your you know pointer finger, your thumb, or whatever, the options to hold this light are endless because of the way the body is. As I said, it's not my preference to hold it like that, uh, just because of the stature that this light is given with the uh, CR123 body. Holding it like this is probably a preference for me or even just like this. This is a phenomenal body because it can house two different batteries, uh, non-rechargeable or rechargeable 16340s. Now, these lights are used by Don sometimes to go diving. So the uh, O-rings uh, around the face there are just so secure. Everything is so secure about this light. Very, very well identical to this head here, except that this one has been de-domed. So if I just get it to, okay, so let's see if we can see the difference here. Yeah, so we kind of can't see the difference in the camera, whereas there is a massive difference in real life. We have much more pink here and more throw. Uh, in the de-domed emitter than we do in the domed one. But that's all right. Now, if we have a look at the cracked ice, this is something that Don offers as well. So you can just opt for a cracked ice pocket clip and you will get it. It's really, really beautiful. He just runs a Dremel over it and makes it into a bit of a pattern. Uh, well worth the extra like 7 to $10. Now, one thing about this light is that uh, when you do try and pocket it, it can get caught on the neck there. It's not by any means a deal breaker, but it is. Uh, it, it, it does make it that you need to be more mindful when pocketing it. It may catch every now and then. Whereas that's where like these three here, and even the DC zeros, and even the ray light, and even the Arcadian, okay, a lot of them here pocket really well. Uh, but this this is one not issue, but it's one thing just to note as well is that you know when you are pocketing this, it's going to catch on that neck area there. But what a gorgeous, gorgeous light, absolute work of art, and you know we've got tail standing, we've got the ability to see when the light's on. There it is. And this has the same driver, the Hive driver, except uh, this one has had memory mode uh, applied. So no memory here and memory here. Now the micro click, Arcadian, whatever you want to call it, CWF. This has a reverse clicky. So when it is uh, on, that's when you can change outputs. We have a smooth reflector down here. This is running a 219C 5000K, which in my opinion is a gorgeous, gorgeous emitter. 5000K offers a whole lot of light, uh, but the 219C gives it a beautiful kind of temperature. So I love that. This thing is absolutely minuscule, and yet in the hand, it just feels like it belongs, you know? The cutout on the body and the pocket clip meeting this downward area from the neck here makes for pocketing a dream. It is relatively deep carry as well, which is really, really nice. All of these lights are pretty much the same in terms of their deep carry abilities. Screwed in pocket clip, uh, just robust, unbeatable reverse clicky, man. This thing feels so strong. It'll probably outlast any other uh, reverse clicky. It just, it feels bloody strong. That's what I'm saying. Programmable light as well. Uh, in fact, all of these lights are programmable. And we have a stonewash titanium here, but there are plenty of different options that you can get. Same with the rest of these lights, in fact.
but this one makes for probably the best top pocket light you can get, I reckon. If you want, if you like a light to go in your top pocket that's a robust light that's going to give you what you need when you need it, uh, the Micro Click Micro Arcadian is your answer. Next is, I guess you could call it the competitor to the Micro Arcadian, is the uh, the Hoku Clicky. This one has fast become my favorite uh, around the house light. It is compact, it is strong, it offers a beautiful beam. Oh crap, I forgot the beam profile of the micro clicky. I apologize, uh, people. So here we have a very, very narrow uh, beam profile in the beginning, but let me tell you, when you zoom out, this thing just becomes a perfect circular beam with some emphasis on, on a hot spot. As you'll see in the night shots, this beam profile is so damn useful that it puts the word useful to shame. All right, let's put that back there. Now, back to the Hoku, I apologize for interrupting. So as I was saying, this has become my uh, my regular round the house light. It is just phenomenal, programmable. I've got it on low, medium and high, always comes on in low. And this is running the Nietzsche 219B 3000K emitter, but the way that the uh, the reflector is working with this light, I don't know what the technology is, but look at that. It is just an enormous hotspot, basically. Just It's just an enormous hotspot of light. It is so friggin' useful. And the amount of light it puts out is more than enough when it's very, very dark. So I absolutely love this light for my indoor house light. It just goes with me everywhere. It is running the reverse clicky. So you click it in first and then you operate it. Very easy to operate once it's clicked in because of that open dish area here. You see that? This is running the short pocket clip. I wanted a short one for the uh, the Hoku Clicky. It has a brass dimpled engine and the rest of it is uh, tumbled aluminium. And it also has here those shiny areas here that uh, that Joshua Dawson just decides to do just, to, just for a bit of excellence, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous light. Beautiful cutout at the top here makes it for a very comfortable holding and also a dream to pocket. Once it goes in on your pocket, your pocket sits in there. Nice and deep carry pocket, uh, pocket clip. And it's just a phenomenal light, this one. Just phenomenal. Really great size as well, you know, like in terms of uh, 10 440s, it ju it's, it's just a little bit more than the other two in terms of thickness and stuff. So... It, it has a bit more uh, hand presence, and I like that about it. I love that, in fact, about it. And last but not least, we got the Raylight uh, Mini Pineapple. This is actually my dedicated hat light. So when I, uh, when I think I might need to go hands-free, I've actually reversed the pocket clip from up here to down here, and I just put a cap on, and then you just slip it over the top there, and it's good to go. So this is actually the only, uh, the only light in this lineup that, that can have a, a hat clip. So I love that about this light. This one is running the 519A 4000K emitter, beautiful emitter. We have here a reverse clicky as well, all in the same titanium anodized black oil. This is a very light, very, very compact light, very light light. Uh, and with the reverse clicky here, so click it on, it always comes on in moonlight. This is the program I've got it in, low, medium, high. Very easy to operate. And look at that beam as well. Look at that beam. It's just gorgeous. But uh, look at that as well. So again, large hotspot, more spill around the hotspot, but absolutely phenomenal for a 10 440 light. And again, you'll see in the night shots, this thing does not disappoint. It is phenomenal. Also has a green glow, glow uh, ring around it. If you can see it, uh, not really. Actually, does it? Just gonna turn that on for a second to see if it does. Let's have a look, ready? Yeah, it does, yeah, it's there. It's just, yeah, it's there. But fantastic light, love the cutout to make it thinner in the body, but that it's got these checkered areas in the body here, which adds to your, to, to your grip. Just phenomenal grip, this thing. And even though it is so damn thin, it's so grippy that it works, it just works. All right, I'm just gonna quickly show you the beam uh, pattern here of the Hoku Clicky. So it looks like it's a thin beam, but as soon as you lift that up, look what happens. So this, as I said, this is basically just a a, a large circular hotspot. Really, really beautiful beam profile, this. Now, I'm pretty sure all of these lights have low voltage protection. Uh, I'm not sure if 
the haikus do actually they may have a low voltage warning but i don't know if it's low voltage protection i am so sorry if i got that wrong i thought i read that somewhere so sorry if i got that wrong but all of these lights are rugged uh they are look even though these lights are beautiful they are designed for use they are all designed to be used to be to be thrown around maybe not like pegged around but you know they are designed to be thrown in a pocket or you know thrown in a bag or whatever they are not designed to just sit on a shelf for the rest of their life i know i am guilty of having some of them sit on the shelf but i do try my absolute hardest to um to uh use them regularly uh, so, and the ones that I don't end up using, if they're not an absolute keeper like this, for example, or like this, for example, then, you know, I, I end up moving them on. But um, they are a set of absolutely gorgeous lights and they deserve to be used and get pocket time and be out in the community just living it up. All right, let's cut to night shots and then we'll come back for some final thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to give prices to all of these. Some of these don't even really exist without, you know, finding them on the friggin' black market almost. I'm looking at you, DC Zeros. Oh, now before I go, I just want to make a mention of the difference between on-time mode advancement and off-time mode advancement, okay? So I'm going to take the Focusworks F2 and I'm going to take the uh, Dawson Machine Craft Todai. So the Focusworks has on-time mode advancement. The Todai, the uh, Dawson Machine Craft, has off-time mode advancement. Here's what that means, and I'm just gonna show you in a very simple way. All right, turn this on and turn this on. Now, once the focus works, which has the on-time mode advancement, once the focus works has been on for more than like 150 milliseconds, when I off and on, it's gonna come back on at the output that it normally starts in. Now, this has no memory which means the focus works always starts in low and then medium and then high. But on time mode advancement means if the light has been on for less than 150 milliseconds, the next time you turn it off and on, it will advance to the next mode, okay? That's what on time means. So from off, knowing that this has no memory, you know that it's always gonna come on in low. If you want high, you have to momentary, low, medium, high and then you get high, okay? If you click it on and leave it on look around and then you say, oh, I need a, a higher output, you need to click it off and then click one, two to get your higher output because it's gonna come back on in the low mode, okay? And then if you want the highest output, one, two, three, click it on. Clicking this on into low and then leaving it on for more than 150 milliseconds, off and on comes back on at the same output because it was on for longer than 150 milliseconds, hence on time mode advancement. It relies on how long the light has been on, not how long the light has been off. Malkoff uses the same mode advancement, on time mode advancement. Now, off time mode advancement means this light judges how long the light go has been off uh, in order to, to judge whether or not it advances mode. So this light's been on the whole time I've been talking about the focus works. Now watch this, off, on. It just advanced, off, on, and it advanced again. But if I turn it off and I leave it off for more than 150 milliseconds or thereabouts, when I turn it back on, it comes back on into the mode it normally comes on in. I don't have memory mode in this one either. So that is off time mode advancement. So off time mode advancement means that the mode will advance depending on how long the light has been off, not how long the light has been on. I just wanted to quickly mention that before cutting to uh, night shots because I've always wanted to have that explained to me. So I hope that was clear. Let's check out night shots and we'll go from there. See you in a sec. All right, so I'm kicking uh, night shots off with the yellow day, the record. Uh, this is the boom reflector. Now, I am intentionally doing these night shots inside because I do believe that most of these lights are going to be used in kind of a similar proximity to what I'm using them for right now. So, you know, just around the house. Oh, well, no, not around the house, but, you know, people use them for work, like up roofs and things like that. So I thought if I go across the road to the park or whatever, um, it's not going to be a realistic 
view. So I just wanted to give a realistic view of potentially what people are gonna be using them for. So this is the boom reflector here. Absolutely sensational. As you can see, such a beautiful circular beam with a lot of light dedicated to it. And I'm just gonna turn it off so you can see there's nothing there, right? So when I turn it back on, this thing is lighting up the whole room. Now off and on, oh, off and on. That's even brighter. That has just lit up the whole room. And look what happens when I turn the uh, light to the roof, it just lights up everything. So it's a fantastic light designed to light up everything. Look, you know, I, I point it in the corner of the kitchen and just everything lights up. It's absolutely phenomenal. And then off and on, oh, just when you think it can't go any brighter, it does. And again, shining this to the roof, look at that. The whole room is lit up, just beautiful. So that is the wreck -It light with the boom, uh, did I say boom driver again earlier? I meant boom reflector. If I said boom driver, I'm an idiot. It's boom reflector. And look at that, man. That is just so bloody useful. Absolutely love it. All right. Uh, everything's gonna go dark. Okay, so now this is the Haiku head in the 14500. This is the domed, uh, domed emitter. And that is on the lowest output and then off and on. Oh, that's the next one up. So this one's got some good throw, as you can see at the back wall there. And still beautiful spill though, absolutely gorgeous spill. But you know, you can see that was the, uh, the record was 5,000K, this is 4,000K. I mean, and the record's Samsung, this is Nietzsche. Are we, are we upset with the record? No, we're not. So I've said it before, I'll say it again. Let's, let's cut some slack for the Samsung emitters, will we? And look, hey, I like I like nature. Don't get me wrong, but you know, let's let's stop uh, stop giving Samsung a hard time. Now again, shine it to the roof. Look how useful that is. So look, it's just on the roof, but it just bounces and just makes it so bright. And then that's shining at something in particular. Again, over in the kitchen, you can still see everything. Nothing like the boom reflector, but uh, this reflector is still very good. And the hotspot's quite large. And then off and on, that's your highest output to the roof, lights up the whole room. So it's just uh, just a fantastic little light that just does all the jobs you need, really does. All right, here we go, 3000K. This is the Todai, and that is on the lowest output, off and on. There we go, look at that. That actually looks similar to the boom reflector. Uh, it really, really does. This is giving a really nice evenly spread light. Could be the emitter as well that's doing that. The 219B 3000K could be just that style of emitter with large hotspot and stuff. But uh, look at that, shining up to the roof and just lights up everything. Uh, but that is a really, really nice, nice emitter there. And there we go, so low, medium. Hi, yeah, beautiful all the way back there as well. So again, very useful, you know, like, I mean, I don't, this is not a big house, but uh, it's still very, very useful for the house that, that this is. And, you know, if you're up in a roof or, you know, working nights or something like that, you know, these, these lights, man, they're all you need. Bring a couple of spare batteries and they're all you need. All right, the F3, look, see, look at this, the F3, absolutely beautiful. That's on the lowest output and that is just kicking butt. Now, I have to go, yeah, there we go. So that's the uh, on time uh, mode advancement at work there. So you've got to turn it off because it's been on for more than 150 milliseconds. I've just explained it, but anyway, yeah, you've got to turn it off and then go one, two again. Now, look at this. So this is a 10 degree, I think. Uh, it's a total internal reflection uh, optic and look at how much light this is offering. You know, So I, I point it at the friggin' microwave and the whole kitchen's lit up. And then if I do that, whole kitchen's lit up again. So less of a hot spot and spill uh, and more of just blatant light. And now I'll go to the brightest, one, two, three. Look at that. What the heck more do you need than that? Oh, seriously, point it in any general direction and there is still light everywhere. That's pretty amazing, I must say. So good on you, Focus Works. All right, what do we got, what do we got? All right, so this is the F2, so it's gonna have the exact same uh, total internal reflection, but this time we have 
uh, the 4,000K in the Nietzsche, not the 5,000K in the Samsung, which was the F3. So look, there is less light. There's, you, you're not dealing with as much light as the Samsung offers, but it's still enough, you know? It is definitely enough to do the job. And then one, two, three, there we go. So, you know, it's, you, you can't fully, I mean, you can tell, but at, at these high outputs, you can't really tell that, oh, that's, you know, got a bit of green tint in it and stuff. It's like, mate, just point the light where you need it to see and let it light up the way so that you can, you know, work out what the heck you're doing. All right, that's the F2. All right, so we have here the uh, DC0 in the 10 degree optic on the lowest output. And that is the next output up, medium. So it's st still, this is pretty good as well, you know. It's, uh, I don't think it is as good in terms of lighting up the rest of the room uh, as the focus works, but it's still doing a pretty solid job. Let's see how it goes on high. Oh, there we go. So again, high, and this actually looks like it might have more of a focused hotspot. So maybe this is more of a focused degree beam than, uh, than the focus works. Look at that up there. Yep, lights up the room just by shining it to the roof. And all the way back there is, uh, I say all the way back there, that's like 10 steps. But um, no, nah, it's more than 10 steps. But anyway, so fantastic uh, beam profile in the 10 degree optic and you can just see whatever the heck you want. All right, so there is the 20 or 30 degree optic in the other DC0. It's on the lowest output, not really seeing much, so let's go to the next one. Oh yeah. So, you know, I, I like this beam better. It's just softer and more, more evenly spread and distributed towards whatever, really, you know? So there's no kind of hot spot area. It's just kind of all nicely spread out. I really like that. And then that's the highest output. Check that out. Just doesn't matter where you're pointing it. You get light everywhere. Shine it to the roof, shine it to the friggin' fruit, microwave, whatever you want. Everything is lit up. So that's a real bonus for the 10, 20 or 30 degree uh, uh, optic. Not sure which one it is, I do apologize. All right, the D-domed Haiku. So this uh, does look a little bit brighter and looks like it'll go a little bit further. That's on the lowest output and it's still, uh, you know, kicking butt. Looked a li little bit brighter than the 14500 domed. But again, back to the hotspot and spill style. We do have a really, really nice hotspot in this and beautiful spill area. Shine it to the roof. Doesn't do as much for brightness uh, at the roof than, uh, oh, it wasn't on the highest output. Oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah, it's pretty good. But you know, the, some of the others were, were a lot better. Like the focus works was a lot better when you shine it to the roof in hopes to get uh, just, you know, overall light. But fantastic beam on it. Just extremely useful, great throw. Glorious, glorious. All right, there's the ray light. So that's the LAN 4500K. That's on low, that's on high. And again, beautiful uh, beam profile, mixed-ish beam, very, very large hotspot at, uh, as the distance grows. Just useful. You know, all of these lights are so bloody useful uh, in, their, in their applications. And again, to the roof and you can just bloody See whatever you want to see. Medium, low, because I've got this on starting on high. And I, I was mistaken, I don't even know why I said that earlier, but the focus works and the Oklumas are not programmable. Everything else is, but the focus works and Oklumas are not. So I do apologize for saying that. Just, just disregard me sometimes, guys. All right, there's the micro click and look at that. Absolutely bloody beautiful. Mixed beam, that's on low, and low is just sensational, but then give it a press, you're on high, and you are just pummeling the darkness, and it is just doing its job. Large, large beam area with a focused hotspot as well. Well, not focused, but more light in the hotspot as well. Uh, until it gets to, you know, a distance, and then it's just just a beautiful spreaded beam. So really great. Look at that. It's engulfing the whole kitchen. Bloody beautiful. 
All right, there's the Hoku, and you are going to see, uh, if you haven't already from this picture, why this light has become my favorite indoor light. Look at that, it is just so beautiful. 3000 K and just, just engulfs everything the way you need it to. Beautiful circular hotspot, provides so much light. So much light, this thing, man. It is just phenomenal, you know, like, it's pure darkness, but then when this thing happens, oh, well, like all of them. But I love this, very soft on the eyes because of the 3000K, so great for around the house at nighttime, next to the bed, whatever you want. It's just uh, really, really cool. Finally, the Pineapple Mini that is on the lowest output, but I'll just cycle up so we can see. Really large hotspot, 519A, 4000K, Got a lot of spill, but large hotspot. As you can see, it's a large hotspot. So that is doing its job. And look at that for this little thing here. That is a pumping output for this little thing, man. So fantastic. Moonlight, low, medium, high. Just beautiful. That is going to wrap up our night shots, people. I, I hope uh, give me some feedback on whether or not you, you are happy with the indoor night shots because... You know, these lights are designed for spaces like this. Um, you know, if I took it over to the park or, you know, like what's the point of shining up trees and things like that or just at a bush, it's like, you know, these things are used indoors, whether it's at home or at work or something like that. They're often used indoors or, you know, walking towards the car and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of change it up. Let me know what you think.